Hello everyone, welcome to our fourth and final session. We've had some amazing lessons about the life of Peter, haven't we? We've seen Peter being chosen as a disciple. We've seen how passionately he's followed his Lord. We've seen the great sadness of his denial of the Lord Jesus, but also his wonderful enthusiasm to preach and heal those around him. Do you remember Auntie Ruth and Auntie Emily's lesson? At the end, we saw how determined Peter was to preach the word of God and serve his Lord after seeing the wondrous resurrection of the Lord Jesus. Well, in our final few lessons together, we're going to look at Peter preaching to the Gentiles. Remember, up until now, Peter has mainly preached to the Jews. In fact, until now, God's plan has mainly been centered around Israel, his chosen special people. They were given the law of Moses and Sinai, and so many prophets like Ezekiel, Daniel, Isaiah and Jeremiah worked with God's people. And what did the Jews think of Gentiles? Well, Jews didn't mix with Gentiles. The Gentiles were viewed as unclean and unholy, and the Jews would want to avoid any situation of mixing with a Gentile. However, this is a very special story. Peter is shown that the gospel message is going to be preached to the Gentiles. And this all begins with a man called Cornelius. It's where Peter meets Cornelius. We're going to take a look at who Cornelius is. So let's get our Bibles open and find Acts chapter 10. So Acts chapter 10, and let's read verse 1. There was a certain man in Caesarea called Cornelius, a centurion of the band called the Italian band. In verse 1, it tells us that Cornelius is a Roman. So we know that Cornelius is a Gentile, but he's no ordinary Gentile. He was a very powerful Roman soldier. And the Romans weren't just Gentiles. They were Gentiles who oppressed and caused harm to the Jews. Years later, the Romans even came and destroyed Jerusalem and killed thousands of Jews. But what do we find in verse 2? Cornelius was a devout man and one that feared God with all his house, which gave much alms to the people and prayed to God always. Even though he's not a Jew, Cornelius is a faithful man praying to God and searching for the truth. Verse 4 tells us that God has heard his prayers and tells Cornelius to send his servants to find a man called Peter. We know who Peter is, but Cornelius probably didn't know that much about Peter. He might never have heard of Peter before, but he trusts in God and sends his servants to find Peter. He really hopes and believes Peter will be able to help him serve God. Well, we know Cornelius is in Caesarea, but where's Peter? Peter is in a place called Joppa. I'm going to show you where these places are. We can have a look how long it would have taken Cornelius' servants to find Peter. So here's a picture of beautiful Caesarea on the coast of Israel. And then this is a map that shows us here that there's Caesarea and then Cornelius' men would have to travel all the way down here to Joppa where Peter is. And remember, they could only travel by walking, so it would take quite a long time. It's about 30 miles, so it might take more than a day to travel. So I wonder why we're told that Peter is in Joppa. Every word in the scriptures is there for a reason. What do we know about Joppa? Can you remember a man who comes from Joppa? Maybe a story about a big fish? Yes, that's right, a man called Jonah. If you like using a pencil, you could circle wherever you see the word Joppa in your Bibles. I like to mark 
in my Bible neatly so I can remember it for next time. So if you want, circle wherever you find it. This is important because when Jonah went to Joppa, God prepared him for a special task. Jonah had to learn that he needed to preach to the city of Nineveh. Now, were the people of Nineveh Jews? No, they were Gentiles, Assyrian Gentiles, and just like the Romans, they also oppressed Israel. And remember, Jews don't normally talk to Gentiles, let alone preach to them. They were ungodly and didn't follow the law. But God told Jonah that he needed to preach to the Gentiles, and the Gentiles were saved because they believed, they had faith. Maybe Peter would think about this story of Jonah when he was in Joppa. So back to our story. God knows that Peter, like Jonah, needs some preparation so that he understands it's good to preach to Gentiles, not just Jews. Whilst the servants from Cornelius are coming to find him, remember, all the way from Caesarea to Joppa, God gives Peter a vision. Well, what does it say in verse 9, in verse 10? It says, Peter goes up to the household to pray about the sixth hour, and he became very hungry and would have eaten. But while they made ready, he fell into a trance. So it's the middle of the day, Peter's in Joppa and he climbs to the rooftop of his house to pray. But Peter's very hungry and whilst they're getting food together, he falls into a trance. He has a vision from God in the middle of the day. It's basically a little bit like having a dream, but he's still awake and can see what's happening. So what does Peter see? I'm going to show you a picture of what Peter sees. It's just a picture that someone's drawn, so it won't be exactly what Peter sees. But I want you to just have a look at it and try to imagine in your minds what Peter could have seen. And I'm going to read from you the verses that tell us what he saw. And Peter saw heaven opened and a certain vessel descending unto him, as it had been a great sheet knit at the four corners and let down to the earth wherein were all manner of four-footed beasts of the earth, and wild beasts, and creeping things, and fowls of the air. And there came a voice to him, Rise, Peter, kill and eat. But Peter said, Not so, Lord, for I have never eaten anything that is common or unclean. And the voice spake unto him again the second time, What God hath cleansed, that call not thou common. This was done thrice, and the vessel was received up again into heaven. So Peter sees some animals in a sheet coming down from heaven, and some of them are unclean. Do you remember in the Old Testament, when God gives the law to Israel, some animals are unclean, like pigs, and the Jews couldn't eat them. Peter is hungry, and God tells him to eat. But Peter says, no, Lord, they are unclean. I can't eat them. Peter knows that this would be disobeying the law of Moses. But God tells him that now he can eat the animals and they won't make him unclean. So then the vision clears, everything goes back to normal, and Peter is left on the rooftop, confused and thinking, what does this all mean? Maybe we're thinking, what does this all mean? There must be a very special lesson that God is teaching Peter. By showing Peter these animals, this would make Peter think about the law of Moses, which he'd followed for all his life. He would immediately think, I can't eat those, they're unclean, and will make me unclean and unholy before God. But God tells him three times that Peter can eat them. God would want to avoid Peter would want to avoid anything that makes him unclean, like the animals. In fact, this is actually how the Jews viewed the Gentiles. The Gentiles were viewed as unclean, and the Jews would go to great lengths to avoid the Gentiles. Remember, they wouldn't even have them in their homes and avoid conversations with them. But what did God say about these animals? He says three times, what God hath cleansed, that call not thou common. God is saying that the animals are no longer unclean, and God is trying to show Peter that the Gentiles are no longer unclean. 
We all know that the Jews are God's special people and he has a wonderful plan for them. But this also means that it's not only Jews that God wants to save. Anyone can serve and please God if they love God and follow his commandments. Remember, even though Cornelius was a Gentile, a Roman soldier, he could follow the Lord Jesus if he followed the Bible. And anyone today, Jew or Gentile, can be in the kingdom of God. So let's remember, God wants me and you to be in his kingdom. God wants all those who believe in him to be in his kingdom. Anyone we see on the street, our neighbour, those we see shopping, or anyone who wants to serve God can be in his kingdom. And we can help by telling people about what we believe, just like Peter's going to do in our story. Peter preached to Jews and Gentiles all across the world. And let's always remember, we can help people be ready for the kingdom of God by telling them about the Lord Jesus Christ and the coming kingdom. So Peter is left on the rooftop, thinking about the vision and what it could mean. Perhaps he doesn't realize yet that God is helping him to understand that he needs to go and preach to the Gentiles. But then suddenly something else happens. There's a knock on the door. I wonder if you know who's knocking on the door. You'll find out in the next lesson with Auntie Becca and learn about when Peter actually meets Cornelius. After the vision of the sheet and the animals, Peter would have been confused. He's then told that some men would arrive at his house, and that he was to let them in. Now, usually, a Jew wouldn't even think about having a Gentile in their home. But, trusting God, when the men arrive, Peter lets them in. A few days later, Peter travels with the men and arrives at Cornelius' house. Cornelius was waiting. He'd gathered his friends and his family. Imagine the excitement in the house. He was an answer to their prayers, and this was a big moment for Cornelius. The Romans worshipped a lot of different gods and idols who were very different to Peter's one god. Somehow, though, Cornelius had found the truth and had been praying to the true god who had heard his prayers. As soon as Peter arrives, Cornelius bows down. Being high up in the Roman army, Cornelius would have been used to having people doubt, bow down to him. This shows how much he respected Peter. But in verse 26, Peter replies, Stand up! I myself am a man. Peter didn't take the glory for himself. He knew he wasn't more special than anyone else just because he had the Holy Spirit. Peter knew that he was there to spread the good news of the kingdom and the gospel to the Gentiles. And in verse 33 we read, halfway through the verse, Now therefore are we all here present before God to hear all things that are commanded thee of God. They say, tell us. They all wanted to know why Peter was sent to them. Let's read verse 35. But in every nation he that feareth him and worketh righteousness is accepted with him. How much Peter had learned in just a few days he really understood now how everyone could have a hope. Peter tells the Gentiles there that they too can have a way of salvation by believing, being baptised and following the Lord Jesus. After hearing these words, Cornelius and those with him received the Holy Spirit from God. And just as we saw with Peter in our last lesson, they began to speak in different languages. This was God showing that truly anyone can be accepted with him if they are willing. Then they are all baptised. This was the moment Cornelius had really been waiting for. He had been praying and doing good, but now he was a brother in Christ. Peter could now continue to spread the good news of the kingdom to everyone, knowing that to God, belief and baptism is the most important thing, not whether they are a Jew or a Gentile. We can know and be thankful that although we aren't Jews, we can have a way to be saved as well through Jesus. Just before we finish, I have a challenge for you to do some 
sometime this week. When you find some time, have a look at 1 Peter 3 verse 15. Later in his life, Peter wrote this under inspiration. And it's really good to try and remember these verses. It says, But sanctify the Lord God in your hearts and be ready always to give an answer to every man that asketh you a reason of the hope that is in you with meekness and fear. Maybe you could write this on a piece of card and stick it somewhere where you know you'll see it every morning. Maybe stick it on your door to see if you can remember it. Because really, this is what our lesson is about. Peter learned to preach to the Gentiles, and we, like Peter, should learn to preach to all those around us and to always have something to say about the kingdom of God whenever someone asked us so that we can be ready for the kingdom and we can help others to be ready for the kingdom.